Hey guys, this is Caleb Simpson from ZeldaDungeon.net, and you are watching our Adobe Photoshop tutorials, and these videos are intended for our staff members at the website, and this is just me passing on my tricks to show them how to make some pretty cool pictures uh, for our web stuff, so if you're not interested in that type of stuff, then you probably don't want to be here. So that all being said, we're going to dive right in, and this particular tutorial is about all the color tools. Yay! So, let's, now we have this picture of this sad cardboard robot guy and he just got dumped Aww, so we're gonna make him sad so first of all I just wanted to show you guys that first we have these these are two colors that we're using primarily we have our foreground color and we have our background color and you can click these at either time so right now I'm selecting my background color and now I'm selecting my foreground color and you can change them by either going to your swatches tab notice that my foreground color is changing or you can do it by simply clicking on the foreground color itself or the background color like likewise. And you can make your color either more neutral, more bright, more lighter, or darker. And so this way you can get any color you want by using the hue uh, bar over here and then by selecting it in here. So first of all, let's just make this guy. He just got dumped, so let's gonna make him angry. So our first color tool we're going to look at is um, the pencil tool. Oh, real quick, too, you can change this color by simply using the eyedrop tool. Say, for example, you needed to use, uh, you wanted to select one of these guys, you can use that instead to change your um, foreground color. But anyways, I'm going to switch to red. We're going to use the pencil tool. The pencil tool is probably one of the more popular ones. You've probably seen it before in uh, programs like MS Paint. Um, it allows you to make these kind of jaggedy looking uh, pixeled areas right here and so right now I'm going to just make this guy really pissed off so you'll notice how jaggy this guy looks and the pencil tool you can also change the opacity on it so let's say it's at 50% opacity right now I'm using black and I can go all the way down to one depending on how much you go over it and then you can make it darker and darker uh, so you can get a bunch of cool effects doing that to keep his angry face uh, so next up I want to show you guys where am I? Where am I? Okay, so we can set that all the way back. Another cool option is you can change the size right here. They have some preset dimensions up here that make it easier to uh, sort through. And they also have some weird shapes as well, so you can, for example, make star shapes and stuff. And then you can change the size for it as well, so you can still have a star, but then, once again, it's still very pixelated. Uh, lots of cool little options in here. A little Canada leaf thing going on. Oh, except that it, like, not really what you typically see out of a pencil tool. Never actually seen that before. In any case, you can also change your size by simply right-clicking in here. And you can move your bar here as well. And you can also find all your other weird effects down there. So that is the pencil tool. Yay! So next we're going to go on to the brush tool. And the brush tool is a little bit different. It works kind of like a... Uh, I don't know. It just kind of blasts it. Kind of like an airbrush. So... Um, that's the way I like to think about it. So you can change the flow over here, which changes kind of the distance between the middle and the outside, kind of. Then you can also change the opacity on it, very similar to the um, pencil tool. So this way, for example, it's still completely solid all the way from the center to the outside. Um, so it doesn't change that distance at all, but it will change the um, total opacity of the tool itself. So now let's um, just do something fun. We're going to make him, maybe I'll make this a little bit more transparent, but we're going to change this color to a light blue. We're going to make this poor guy, he's angry and such, but I'm just going to make him cry instead. Oh, poor guy. Oh, oh she left me. Oh, hey, that's not working. There we go. <laughs> she left me. Why did she leave me? Oh. Oh. Poor guy just got dumped. Poor little cardboard man. So anyways, so that is how you use the brush tool. It's kind of fun. In any case, the next one I want to talk about is the uh, paint bucket. This is another one that's probably famous from uh, MS Paint. In any case, um, you can change the tolerance in it very similar to the magic wand tool. And so you can click up here for example these trees tolerance of 10 doesn't get you very far up that tolerance to something like 50 
and you'll select a bigger area. So now one of the things I want to show you real quick is that right now I have anti-aliasing turned on and so this makes the transition kind of smooth. It's kind of, I mean it's hard to say that call this smooth just because the color is so different. But let's say for example that I make it similar so I can use the eyedrop tool for example. I can select something in here and now I can simply click in here. It'll still select that whole area and it has a smooth transition here as well. Now if you do not want a smooth transmission, you want it to be very abrupt, you can turn off anti-aliasing, click on the same spot, and now these areas are going to be incredibly jagged right here. Now you can also do this by using selection tools, for example, as well. So you can select stuff, and then you can simply use this inside it, and it will fill that area up instead, wherever you have selected. So you can do that as well to narrow it down by using the magic wand tool and such, like so, and then filling it in. So cool. All right, so that is all I really want to talk about this. There's also some cooler options you can do with this as well. Um, you can do a whole bunch of crazy stuff with it. In any case, uh, I'm going to leave all these blending options to normal. We'll talk about that at a later time. In any case, I'm going to talk, go on to talking about gradients. And here, the default one is this first setting right here. It typically goes from your foreground color to your background color. And these are the ones you can have most often. And they have some other pre-assembled ones, you can make rainbows and such, but I don't really use most of the preset ones they have, I just typically use the regular one. So now that being said, you can have it go from all sorts of crazy colors. Uh, let's say we want it to go from green to blue or something. So let's use the gradient tool and just defaultly it has this first option, it just goes from one color to the next. So right now we're going from blue to green. Or go the other direction. Or if you don't want to do that, you can just keep going one way. So let's say I'm going this way, it's blue to green. I can switch to this guy down here. Ta -da! Or I can click the reverse button up here. Ta -da! And the reverse button will just switch these two. It doesn't actually switch this guy down here. Now in any case, uh, there's also several other options. I'll let you guys play with those. This one goes round and out. This guy goes like all the way around. This one goes straight through, so as an example. That's not a very good example here, like that. Ta -da. And the cool thing about these guys is that you can use uh, a lot of different effects. Like you can make it more and more transparent and stuff, for example. Uh, and I'm going to show you guys a quick example of that. Um, you can also change the crazy blending options in here as well to do all kinds of crazy effects. Ooh, so weird. Okay, so what I want to show you guys is I'm going to switch this. You can switch these colors in here. You click this little box up here like so, or you can click down right here too to select one. But I'm going to click inside this box. From here you can change your colors. I'm going to change them both to black. And on the top here you can change the opacity. So right now I'm going to make that one 100% and make this one on the left all the way to zero. You can also manually just type it in there. So I'm going to say OK. So now I have it completely transparent in black going all the way to completely opaque in black. So I'm going to start off with this guy right here. Now I can make this very dramatic scene in which our guy is slowly trudging through this area. So sad. So that is all I wanted to talk about about these guys. Next up we have the shape tool. Uh, so the shapes tool defaultly uses your primary color here, but you can also change it up here as well. I tend to like to leave it as my foreground color. In any case, you ha can move your these shapes around, makes a layer down here. Um, you can change all the shapes. You can either right-click here to change them, or you can click up here as well. Now, alternatively, you can make shapes by doing things like making this a circle tool and then filling it in with uh, filling it in with this guy as well. Um, now, let's go on to talk about some of these other tools. One of the more useful ones probably is the line tool. You can change the size up here to different things, and you can make your own arrows and stuff like that to make custom arrows, and you can make them whatever size you want. So you can do all sorts of stuff to make some really sweet lines and stuff. Now the cool thing about this guy is that you have a custom shape over here. You have all these pre-done uh, ones, and I assume you could probably make some of your own too. I haven't really messed with it. Let's say that this guy is copyright. That's right. Or we can put a giant green check mark next to him. That's right, you got broke up. So now the other thing you can do is you can have, I don't know, hearts. Let's make him have some red hearts in there. Maybe he's still in love, heartbroken. Hoo, hoo, hoo. 
Anyways, so that is pretty much all I had to say here, I suppose. And I guess I am done. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you guys learned a lot.